afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of the Now Space News. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. In this edition, we'll focus on the Now Space Continuum location of the week ending July 9th, 2022. I will be including a syntax key on your screen. It should be up there somewhere as per the suggestion of one of my viewers, so that you know what I mean by the numbers I'm banking on your screen, which is down there somewhere. So the first headline we're gonna look at, and all of these headlines right here, uh, these pictures that I'm, that I'm showing you, these screenshots, come from PBS website. So it says, news wrap, American WNBA star Brittany Griner pleads guilty to drug possession in Russia. Wow, that takes some cojones to bring some drugs into Russia. Hmm? So what do we have here? We have adjective pronoun, breaking the continuance of the evidence with the colon. Then we have a series of adjectives, tangible contract adjectives, which in the end are coloring guilty into a pronoun. And then as you know, nothing can pro uh, follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, or in this case, an adverb, which is in the future tense, which is modifying drug into an adjective, which is coloring possession into a pronoun. And then again, same rule, nothing can follow a pronoun except for yada, yada, yada. And in this case, it is an adverb, which is modifying Russia into a dangling participle verb. Why do we call it a dangling participle verb? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you got to consider what a verb is. A verb is thinking. Have you ever heard of a verb, Russia? In any case, Russia has been modified into a verb by the adverb in. In fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble, a verb cannot exist unless it's being modified by an adverb. And in this case, Russia is a dangling participle verb and a verb is thinking and there's nothing left to think about. So Russia is just kind of dangling there and that's why we call it dangling participle verb. Not really much to say about this one. Um, She's admitting that she's guilty, that it's her bad. Um, so I guess she's at the mercy of the Russian legal system. Next headline, White House COVID coordinator, Dr. Ashish. Yeah, apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. On the rise in new variants. Hmm. So we have a White House COVID coordinator. So this Dr. Ashish Ya is coordinated COVID. How he does that or she does that, I have no idea. But they're coordinating COVID. And the doctor's coordination of COVID is on the rise in new variants. New variants of what? That's very puzzling and confusing to me. E even in an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun sense, it's a horrible headline in, in my humble opinion. So we have a series of adjectives, tangible contract adjectives, which then are coloring doctor, the DR, into a pronoun, which is an abbreviation. But in this sense, we don't know that. We've been given no closure as to what DR means except that we have a vague inclination that it is doctor. And then we have a break in the continuance of the evidence. So that goes along with the rule I just mentioned. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, in this case, or an adverb. Next we have, after that breaking the continuance of the evidence, we have a couple more tangible contract adjectives. And then we have non-tangible contract pronoun and then we have adverb the which is modifying rise into an adjective and then non-tangible contract in is a pronoun followed by non-tangible contract new adverb which is modifying variance into a dangling participle verb news wrap Texas judge blocks Biden vaccine mandate for federal workers. 
Okay. One thing that I get a lot of joy out of when I'm reading these fiction headlines is the alliteration that occurs. And that just means that they use the same consonant uh, in succession. So blocks Biden would be an example, a small example of alliteration. So much fun. In correct sentence structure, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to do that. But in the fiction, you can do whatever you want. So what do we have here? We have adjective pronoun news wrap. Then we have a, another series of tangible contract adjectives, which end up coloring mandate into a pronoun, followed by adverb four, and then adjective federal coloring workers into a pronoun. So in Texas, a judge blocked, just like a football player, blocked Biden's vaccine mandate so that federal workers can work without having to be coerced into receiving something into their bodies that they don't want there. Because ladies and gentlemen, con uh, contract is by consent, okay? And if someone is putting something into your body without your consent, if they're forcing you to do that, you know what that's called? That's called R A P E. Yes, it is. Next headline Biden to sign executive order to protect some some abortion access. AP reports. So I think AP they mean Associated Press. So we have pronoun Biden followed by adverb in the future tense too, which is modifying sign into an adjective, which is coloring executive into an adjective, which is coloring order into a pronoun followed by adverb two in the future tense, which is modifying protect into an adjective, which is coloring some into an adjective, which is coloring abortion into an adjective, which is coloring access into a pronoun, breaking the continuity to the evidence with the comma. And then we have AP, which is adjective and then reports, which is pronoun. So this hasn't happened yet. They're talking about something that's it's in the future. Uh, and it's an order to protect some abortion access. So abortion is going to have some access. Um, they must be keeping abortion under heavy guard or something or, or locked off somewhere where no one can access it. Uh, but I guess, you know, Biden's going to give some people, you know, perhaps supervised visitation with abortion. I don't know. Next headline. Texas governor authorizes state forces to return migrants to border. Adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, future tense, adjective, pronoun, adverb, future tense, dangling participle verb, border. So the Texas government is authorizing state forces to return migrants to the border. Does the Texas governor realize that Texas is actually in Mexico, just like Arizona and just like New Mexico? I don't know. And he's talking about migrants. He's not talking about immigrants. He's talking about migrants. So that's an interesting headline. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to share with you a personal, uh, on a personal note, I have had, I've been blessed and had the honor to become friends with multiple uh, individuals from Mexico who made that risky decision to try to get from Mexico to the past tense the United States for a better life for themselves and their family and what they had to go through and, and it's just ridiculous in my mind um, the hoops that they have to go through and by the way these individuals I got to know them prior to uh, 2015 so this applies to those prior to 2015, whatever happened after 2015, I don't know too much about, but what this is what I'm talking about. Prior to 2015, I, I was friends with multiple people who risked everything for a better life. And it's unfortunate that the legal system 
and the fiction system does the things that it does in this regard. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson to step down after a string of scandals. Now, I'm pretty sure that this individual has actually vacated his position. Uh, but this headline is, is in the future tense. It's got a series of adjectives coloring Johnson into a pronoun followed by non-tangible contract future tense adverb two, which is uh, modifying step into a verb. Then we have another adverb down modifying after into a verb. And then we have adverb a modifying string into a verb and then adverb of modifying scandals into a dangling participle verb. Pretty nice example of adverb, verb, adverb, verb uh, right here. So I guess there was a string of scandals, um, stringy, like string cheese of scandals. Uh, maybe like those strings that some kids hang up in their bedrooms and hang photographs on. Maybe that's what they're talking about. But this guy Obviously, it was up on a, a, a pedestal or a stage, and now he's going to step down off of that because of this string of scandals. Yeah. All right. So now we have one final thing to talk about, and I'm looking forward to this one. So this actually comes from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation which is adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb. And this is off their Twitter account. It says the Georgia Bureau of Investigation is releasing surveillance video from this morning's explosion that destroyed the Georgia Guidestones. And this was from July 6th, which would have been Wednesday of this past week. This is a video of the car, I guess. The suspect speeding away. And there it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you know what the Georgia Guidestones are? In brief, they were a monument that was erected, I think, back in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Don't quote me on this. Didn't do my homework. My bad. And no one really knows exactly who did it, who was responsible, who paid for it, who funded it. I don't even think they can con uh, track down the contractors that did it, that put the stones up, or who engraved the stones, which is odd because you can usually find out who did that by looking at the stones themselves. There's usually some mark or, or something on there. But in any case... It has sort of some guidelines on there and in, in a lot of different languages about perhaps one individual's view of what a perfect world would be. Some instructions. And one of the key hot topics or triggers, I like to call them, in this Georgia Guidestone text engraved on the rocks is that there's a some sort of population uh, mentioned there, ideal population to be in balance with nature, which got a whole bunch of people talking about how the elites want to implement depopulation of Earth to get to an optimal population uh, baseline. You can look all this stuff up on Google. It's no secret. Uh, the reason why I haven't really looked it up is because I'm not real interested in things like that i mean as far as conspiracy theories you know it's a very interesting but as far as my day-to-day -day, it doesn't really have anything to do with it so you know we prioritize what is uh what is important in the day-to-day -day, so this just isn't one of those things so let's continue scrolling down the twitter timeline of the ga bureau of investigation the videos show the explosion and a car leaving the scene shortly after the explosion no one was injured this is interesting, what I just saw here. If you look at this video closely, bang, and then there's a light. 
why is there a flash there? Was the video edited in some way? What is that? I'm not sure what that is. That's pretty interesting. So then we have, for safety reasons, the structure has been completely demolished. So I guess it wasn't completely demolished. And then they, the authorities, just decided to come in and boom, knock it down. And it looks like that stone right there has Hebrew on it. Anybody out there want to translate what that is? If that's of some pertinence as to why that this particular photo was shot this way with this stone right there in our faces, maybe there's some pertinence to that. In any case, thank you for joining me for this week's edition of the Now Space News. As always, I appreciate your viewership. If you have any suggestions for this program, leave them in the comments. If you're interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which is the grammar that I teach and have been teaching for five years, you can email me at the email address that's been screened on your screen for the whole video. Or you can study the over 300 videos that I put up for free on this channel, the very channel you're watching. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next week. Be safe.